Hey, what are you doing in the forest touching grass? Come here. We have a tutorial to finish. We are going to finish the cityscape scene that we started in the previous tutorial. All right, wait, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay, all right. I'm going to talk a lot in this tutorial, so bear with me. I hope you learned something, and I hope I'm clear enough for you. Let's start. No time for dilly dally. Okay, so firstly, the city floor. I'd recommend splitting the floor into different sections by separating the faces you intend to use as roads from the city floor itself. The reason you do this is to make the city have more order and look more natural because the particle system is just going to spawn buildings all over the place. As you can see, I separated the roads from the city floor so that the buildings do not spawn on the roads and this also makes that there are clear pathways throughout the city now which is nice. The city floor is also very subdivided because the more faces a plane has, the more control your vertex groups will have on the particle systems. If you don't know what a vertex group is, then I recommend you watch the basics of particle systems. I will link inshallah a tutorial in the description because I'm not going to go through much detail with the particle systems, I'll just go through the basics. Uh, going into the render viewport, you can see the floor shading is super simple. It's literally just a solid color. Um, I didn't bother giving it a proper shader because you'll barely see it at the end and it makes sense to be this dark because many buildings are supposedly casting their shadows on it. So, you know, I just skipped it as a solid color. The road, on the other hand, its base shader is a little more intricate with a diffuse shader color dodging the dark blue color. This is because I'm going to add street lights along its sides and since I have this diffuse shader here now, the lights will have an effect on the road which adds a little more cool detail to the render. Uh, finally, the sky shader deserves an entire tutorial on its own, so I won't go into depth of how I made the sky. If you guys are interested, I have a two-part series on shading anime skies on my Patreon. Link of course will be in the description. Uh, but here's the entire shader if anyone is interested, and if anyone wants a tutorial on anime skies, uh, just plop that suggestion in the comments. Right. Secondly, the lighting. I used the three sun technique I taught in one of my previous YouTube videos, link in the description of course, but I actually only needed to use one sun since the buildings uh, could not be influenced by their intricate colors. If you watched the last tutorial on the cityscape, you'd understand that the shader does not take world colors uh, from the sun, rather it adds its own color through color ramps, so yeah, that was my mistake, but I was too lazy to change that. Uh, then I positioned a sphere roughly in the center of the frame behind my city plane. Uh, I placed an area light then directly in front of the sphere and set it the strength setting to super high, around a number like 15,000. I then made sure to rotate the sun in accordance to where this uh, sphere was facing uh, because then, you know, it'll make more sense of uh, where the light is coming from. You can skip this part if you want, but if you don't want to, welcome. I know we've been talking a lot, so maybe we shall just relax for the next 20 seconds so I can rest my tongue and drink some coffee. Back to the video! Now the third step is the particle systems themselves. All in all, I used six particle systems. The first one is the simple building category we made in the previous tutorial. As you can see, they are rotated a little weirdly, but that is because when you select a collection or object to be the emitted particles in the system, they may be laying on their sides or upside down, and therefore you have to rotate the original model until they stand upright in their particle system. This you'll have to do for every collection, probably. And another thing you might note is that the pink radiant on the singular models is a bit wonky here whenever I move in the viewport. But when we put them in a particle system, the gradient works fantastically, making it look like they are fading into the horizon. This is because I edited the mapping location of the gradient node uh, only after they were particles, so it was easier to place the gradient appropriately. That is my advice, only move the gradient once you have made the buildings a particle system. 
so that you can place them correctly. Now, these buildings are used as filler for the entire city and they are spread throughout the city floor. The particle settings are pretty simple. The height is set to 6, so they are not too small. I up the scale randomness so the building sizes are more varied. And importantly, I have the children's settings enabled to interpolate it. Make sure not to set the render amount to too much. Uh, the default is set to 100, so dial that down to something respectable to like 8. Uh, set it to 100 and your PC will cry with smoke. Finally, I have a vertex group assigned. You might ask why, because these buildings are supposed to be fuller and therefore everywhere. Uh, I need a vertex group because and then I can stop the buildings from appearing in this curved shape. Because I modeled a little raised highway. Now through the vertex group, the buildings won't intersect this highway and it will look way better. If you're curious about the highway, it's literally just a plane extruded in a curve and then subdivided a little bit to make it smoother. And it has the same shader as the road. Now, the other collections were arranged similarly with little bit exceptions. The big symbol buildings I placed in the background nearer to the sunset, and due to that, their shader is lighter than the buildings in the foreground. I also made them less because they were big, and I sadly did not give them children. The third set of particles which is the detailed buildings uh, I placed further in the back using a vertex group, so I excluded them from the front. The reason why I didn't spawn them everywhere, like the symbol buildings, is 1. Because they were more detailed, so I used them more sparingly. And 2. I later added another particle system that spawned big buildings in the foreground instead of the background, so I didn't want it to seem too cluttered. There's another thin row of buildings I added in the back of the city. These buildings were textured with only a solid color. This color was the same pink as the gradient we added on the building texture. Uh, this was just to add a final row of buildings that completely felt like they were far off in the horizon. I recommend using super simple buildings for this particle system because you won't be able to see any details. Now, remember when I said I'll be adding big buildings in the foreground? Well, I used a vertex group to restrict them to the foreground. These were the big detailed buildings that I think really helped the scene look like a city because of how they lined the sides of the road. Make sure you play with the seeds of all the particle systems so that you can get your favorite result. And obviously, if the buildings are not rotated in a way you like, just go to the original model and rotate them a bit. The final particle system is sort of a cheat. I summoned in a small cube and added a simple orange emission shader. I then spawned it in the entire city floor. I love how these little cubes make the city look more full and alive, and they are super simple, just like cubes with emissions. We are not done yet, sorry for talking so much, just three more steps. Be strong. Now this following one is super important. I modeled the plane to encompass the entire city, and then gave it a simple volume scatter node with a noise tree plugged into the density. I had two versions of this fog, or well, this volume. One where the color ramp was near black, so it was mostly uniform fog. The second one, however, I added a white slider and slightly crunched the black and white values. This gave the effect of misty wisps amongst the buildings and gave it an awesome feel of depth. I would say this is one of my favorite parts of the scene, while it's also one of the easiest parts to make. After having all the particle systems, I wanted to add a little detail, so I modeled a very low poly light post and added an area light to the end of it. I then alt d the light along the pieces of road visible to the camera and voila, we have street lights that emit light on the road. Lazy but effective if I do say so myself. Alright, finally, I hand placed the big intricate buildings. Two on the left, one in the middle, slightly bucking the sun, cause you know, looks cool, and the fake Eiffel Tower on the right. There we go, and that's the overview of how I made this abomination. Sorry for talking so much, and thanks for having the patience to listen to my rambling, and special thanks to everyone on the Patreon. This scene and countless others are waiting for you on the Patreon, so check them out if you want to. And now I shall bid thee farewell, and talk no more. Alright, bye.